Baptism, pages 42 through 45. By far the most successful sub-branch of Gnostic tradition is Manichaeanism. This is one of the world's first religions created by a single individual as a virtual work of art. Its roots in the Iranian world are multifaceted, both indirect and direct. The founder and prophet of this religion, Mani, 216 through 276 CE, was brought up above the Delica sites, a Parthian Baptist sect of Judeo-Christianity founded just over a hundred years before Mani's birth located in Mesopotamia. This community is likely linked to the Qumran sect responsible for the so-called Dead Sea Scrolls. Mani was born into an aristocratic Parthian family, but his upbringing was entirely within the community of this sect. He was sickly from birth and probably lame as an adult. At the ages of 12 and 24, he received revelations. The latter of these was from an angel acting as a messenger for the king of the paradise of lights. The supreme god of his system, the supreme deity, is also sometimes referred to by the name of Zervan. The message commanded him to leave the sect and proclaim his own revelations. Mani first traveled to east where the Sindh in northwestern India he converted a Buddhist ruler. Then he went to Iran where he gains the support of the Emperor Shapur. He is given permission to preach his doctrine throughout the empire. The prophet had great success in his lifetime and founded many churches and monasteries in various lands along the Silk Road. Zoroastrianism was already, and for the first time in history, the official state religion of the Sasanian Empire. The fact that Mani was one hand, but also the idea that the truth was our history must be realized in each individual heart based on conscience, not coercion by the state or any authority. Differing ideas were allowed to be expressed. Mani's sect spread like wildfire in the empire and drew the ire of the chief of the Zoroastrian priest, Kedder. After the death of Shahanshah, Shabur I, a subsequent emperor, Bahram I, was persuaded by Kedder to shun and imprison Mani. After 26 days, the founder of Manichaeanism died in prison at the age of 60, probably due to the conditions under which he was constrained. He was not actively killed or executed. The religion founded and promoted by Mani would remain an influential ideology for a thousand years and not only survive that long in regions stretching from China to Europe, but it also caused its many opponents to have to address the issues raised by Mani's philosophy. It was vigorously attacked by Christians and Muslims, as well as Neoplatonist philosophers and even Zoroastrians themselves. For the Christians, opposition was fierce. Manichaeanism was considered the heresy par excellence. This is perhaps because the cultural DNA of Manichaeanism and Christianity were so close. The real founding father of Christianity as an ideology was Augustine of Hippo, 354 through 430, who spent 10 years of his life as a practicing Manichaean before converting to Christianity. Although Christianity as a theological construct took great pains to distinguish itself from Mani's approach, the underlying attitudes of Manichaeanism seem to have penetrated the Christian soul of Mani's model of spirit, being good and all matter evil. His disgust for the human body and sexuality as well as his celibacy all strike the casual observer as being very Christian. Of course, the Christian theologian will counter that Christian doctrine is totally different, yet anyone who has experienced a real-life culture centering under strong Christian social dominance will beg to differ. It is a general good rule of thumb, considering the history of Christian ideas, that if a feature of thought or practice found in Christianity does not have its roots caused in Judaism, the cause is to be sought elsewhere. Huge amounts of the later Christian practices to be discovered in the pagan cultures which are absorbed by the church. However, these anti-material, anti-physical, and anti-sexual ideas cannot have their roots in Greek, Roman, Germanic, and paganism. And again, the actual experience of Christianity, nothing seems more correct than to insist that the spirit is good and the flesh is evil, heaven is good and the world is evil, betrays the enormous impact of the erroneous teaching of Mani. 
and is the best explanation for why the Zoroastrian priest felt he had to be stopped. While Christian thinkers spend volumes attacking Manichaeans and their many offshoot sects, Bogomils, Cathars, Volnian Indians, the Zoroastrians simply stayed at the heirs of Mani and left it at that. It is remarkable that Mani consciously set out to create a new religion, taking bits and pieces from other religions he had studied. From the Zoroastrians, he took truth telling, the symbolism of light, and hierarchization of the cosmos. From the Buddhists, he adopted the concept of non injury to others and reincarnation. From the Christians, he acquired the ascetic attitude, self denial, and the important myth of Christ. Many adopted a conscious chameleon strategy for the spread of his church and his system, continued to thrive in the vein after his death. It had success all along the Silk Road and briefly became the state religion of the Uyghur Turks in Central Asia, 763 through 840. However, in general, Manichaeans remained a distrusted minority. Sometimes they became secretive, claiming in public to be Orthodox Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, Taoists, etc. Basically, Mani taught that the spiritual light was trapped in matter, and that for the Manichaean, the purpose of human life was to strive actively to liberate particles of light through their rituals and practices. Fultz, 2004, page 107. One of the main ways that prison life was liberated in the world was by the consumption of raw, uncooked food in the ritual setting with some sequence singing of hymns designed to send light, liberated from the, their veggies soaring heavenward on the wings of song. Among the errors of Manichaeanism pointed out in the Zoroastrian book, Denkard are the claim that humans were by nature bad, when in fact they were good. The world and matter are bad when they are likewise good. The world and man were created by a demonic entity, when in fact they were created by the wise lord. Other areas include that agriculture is life destroying, when in fact it is a good endeavor to grow crops, and the world is filled with demons that need to be expelled. While the Zoroastrian sees the world mainly filled with angelic beings to be drawn close to man, also, the Manichaean obsession with celibacy is an anathema to the Mazda who sees the procreation of humanity and the pleasures of sexuality as good things provided to man by the wise lord. We can perhaps admire Mani for his brilliance, creativity, and determination, but it is useless to delve any further into the teachings as they are fundamentally flawed due to their erroneous premises concerning the natures of the world, man, and God. Although it is true that Mani's death was obviously caused by conditions of his incarceration, the general tolerance extended to him and his church is really what is astounding. That he was freely allowed to teach his anti-world, anti-human, and anti-nature system in a culture that so much valued these creations is remarkable. The clearest way to look at an heir of Mani is that his system teaches that the world is a bad place and that it is man's task to try to escape it. Iliad concludes that Manichaeanism, uh, Iliadi concludes that Manichaeanism consists in escaping from the prison built by demonic forces and in contributing to the definite annihilation of the world, life, and of man. HRI 2, pages 394, the Mazen sees a world much beset and under attacked by evil forces, but in the battlefield and workshop. It is man's job in tandem with the wise lord to win the battle and perfect the divine product. To want to escape the field of battle is to have the soul of a coward and deserter. In the midst of battle and in the den becomes the great and the blood begins to fly. The Manichaean seeks to ruin the Mazda and hearkens to the orders from the lord and turns his shoulders into the fight. Although Manichaeanism is for all intents and purposes dead, its pattern can sometimes still be seen in movements which lumly preach. The expendability of humanity and human life along the strains of asceticism and puritanism, and the left it is an inevitable mark and stain on Christianity, despite the vicious attacks by the church and some respects Christian culture can be seen to imitate many of Mani's attitudes on the popular level. This is because the most important Christian philosopher, Augustine of Hippo, was himself originally a Manichaean.